Good morning, Philippines. Good morning, world. Good morning, real estate. My co-host graduated BS in Business and Administration, major in Management in Ramon Magsaysay Technological University. He first joined real estate in 2011 in Pragmatic Development and Construction Corporation and was its marketing manager. Today, he is the owner and founder of EMG Property Brokerage. He is a licensed broker, the president of Junior Chamber International, Ilonggo Chapter, Olongapo Chapter, rather, and the current Andrea Zambales Chapter Secretary. Welcome, Mr. Paul John Makadaan. PJ? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, sir, and my co-host for today. He graduated with a BS Industrial Engineering degree at UP Diliman. He joined the Phil Estate Group of Companies in 1995 as an organization development specialist and a TQM trainer where his eyes opened to the various opportunities of the real estate industry. 25 years after that, he is still actively involved as a PRC licensed real estate broker, appraiser, consultant, and accredited real estate lecturer, and BSREM instructor. He was the Secretary General, Treasurer, Vice Chairman of Education, Corporate Treasurer, Secretary General for today. Here is our current Andrea, VP for Internal Affairs, Mr. Jovi Tupas. Okay. Welcome to our NREA online business forum with the topic prospects and settlement of conflicts in housing. Thank you very so much. We... Thank you very much, PJ. So before we start, let us call on our NREA Iloilo chapter president, Ms. Annie B. Lenshoko, to lead us in prayer. Let us all put ourselves in the presence of our Lord. Almighty God, all praises to you before we start our activity today. Be with us, fill our hearts with joy, fill our minds with learnings. Thank you for the opportunity to meet together online. Help us come together to make INRIA an institution that reflects your kingdom. Give us strength to continue working in this time of pandemic. Inspire our thoughts, discussions and ideas and continue to remind us all that what we do, what we accomplish is for the greater pursuit of truth and glory of you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We'd like to thank our dear sponsors for uh, today's business meeting, Eganzon Incorporated, Bria Homes, Vista Residences, Golden Haven Memorial Parks, Duraville Realty and Development Corporation, Forest Lake, SMDC, The Houselands, and Fiesta Communities. So I'd like to introduce the National Real Estate Board and advisors. First, the current board chairman, Mr. Benigno T. Cabrieto Jr. The board vice chairman, Mr. Ricky M. Celis. The current national president of Enrea Nation, uh, National Real Estate Association Philippines, Ms. Imelda C. Maltoto. Our executive vice president, Red J. Rosales. Our Vice President for Internal Affairs, Mr. Jovi Francis W. Tupas. Our Vice President for External Affairs, Mr. Eduardo N. Sanchez Jr. Our Vice President for Chapters, Ms. Senaida S. Fruto. Our Secretary General, Mr. Ronnie B. Bianco. Our current treasurer, Ms. Nicole Ann Marie L. Choa. Our auditor, Ms. Ruth Marie Atienza. Our national PRO, Mr. Jeffrey S. Bongat. Our education chairman, trustee, Ms. Ro Mr. Rodolfo Bionen. Our trustee, Aniceto V. Bisnar Jr. Another trustee, Ms. 
Maria Isolde Flores Prado and Miss Maria Victoria O. Polisco. So, also, our Board of Advisors, our Chair Emerita, Chair Lady of Board of Advisors, the past President and past Chair Lady of National Real Estate Association, Ms. Marisa Del Mar. One of our advisor and past president and past chairman of NREA, architect Grace S. Layu. Another advisor, past president and past chairman of NREA, architect Pelino A. Palafox Jr. Another advisor, a past president and past chairman and of NREA, architect Nestor S. Mangio. Also, an advisor and past president and past chairman of NREA, Alejandro S. Maniala. Advisor, NREA former member and PRB Res board, Mr. Bansan C. Chowa. And also an advisor of NREA, Marcelino C. Mendoza. Thank you very much, PJ, for that. And now, let me introduce to you our NREA chapter presidents. Metro CBD Chapter President, Ms. Emmy Polido. Bulacan Chapter President, Mr. Dennis B. Sumo. Pampanga Chapter of Enrea, Ms. Violeta T. Evaristo. Enrea Pangasinan Chapter, Mr. Romel Agasita. Enrea Baguio Car Chapter, Ms. Alma Grace Sara. Enrea Bataan Chapter, Ms. Juliet Refuerzo. Enrea Zambales Chapter, Mr. Dave Lubong. Enrea Cavite Chapter, Ms. Sandy Coral. Enrea Tagaytay Batangas Chapter, Ms. Rosa Maria P. Rias. Enrea Mindoro Chapter, Attorney Erika Catarbas. Enrea Ormoc Leite Chapter, Mr. Evelio Varona. Enrea Cebu Chapter, Mr. Abundio C. Gultiano Jr. Enrea Iloilo Chapter, Ms. Annie B. Lencioco. Enrea Cagayan de Oro Chapter, Ms. Violeta Viola Zita Sun, Enrea Davao Chapter, Miss Livia Pepino, Enrea Zamboanga Chapter, Mr. Jeffy Baluran, and our Enrea South Cotabato Jensen Chapter, Miss Anna May Escalante. We would also like to thank our Enrea Secretariat, headed by Miss Aurora M. Pusung, Mr. Virgilio V. Maclang, Miss Lalin L. Santawana, Miss Eileen P. Garlitos, Mr. Paul T. Santos. Ms. Maria Lourdes L. Angeles and Mr. Bernardo M. Ejada. Good morning, everyone. So for our opening remarks, May is a PRC licensed real estate broker, an appraiser, consultant, and env environmental planner. She is an international realtor of the National Re Association of Realtors in the United States of America. She is a broker and associate leadership council of Keller Williams, Philippines, member of the Philippine Association of Realty Consultants and Specialists, Incorporated, and a member of Philippine Institute of Environmental Planners, a na national and NCR chapter. She owns the IC Magtoto Realty. She is a graduate of BS Food Technology and Master of of management major in business management at the University of the Philippines. She is our national president. Let's all, all welcome Ms. Imelda Magtoto. Thank you. Good morning. The Housing and Urban Development Coordinating Council or HADC and the Housing and Land Use Regulatory Board, HLURB, were consolidated into the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, or DSUD, in 2019 through RA 11201. DSUD is the national government entity responsible for the management of housing, human settlements, and urban development on planning and policy making. Regulating program coordinator or creation and performance monitoring entity. The Human Settlement Adjudication Commission was reconstituted from HLURB as purely quasi-judicial agency and mandated to adjudicate 
disputes relating to real estate development, homeowners association, and appeals from decisions of the local and regional planning and zoning bodies and attached to the suit for policy planning and program coordination also. There are also prospects of housing in the 2024 Strategic Investment Priorities Plan or the SIPP as presented in the ASEAN Japan Center webinar called the SIPP framework under the CREATE law where it contains the list of projects and economic activities with incentives. We are fortunate today for our Andrea online business forum entitled Prospects and Settlement of Conflicts in Housing to have the sued under Secretary Maynard Savili to give the sued updates, particularly on anti-illegal real estate service practices. Interagencies task force recently initiated by the sued and formed last July 2021. And Human Settlements Adjudication Commissioner Attorney Sergio Yoyok Emmanuel Yap II on the rules of procedure on the commission as in end bank resolution number eight last March 2021. Also, we have Mr. Dino John Brecton, the OIC of the Research and Policy Division of the Board of Investments or BOI. We have also distinguished moderators, the legal director of First Parks Homes and the first vice president of the Subdivision and Housing Developers Association, or SHEDA, Attorney Joy Manao, and the National President of the Philippine Association of Realty Consultants and Specialists, or PARCS, Consultant Attorney Ray Cartojano. So welcome everyone, more power, stay safe from this contagious Delta variant. God bless and Thank you, everyone. Okay, we would like to uh, move on to our announcements and house rules. Andrea is offering a new normal rate for new members, also for all licensed real estate practitioners who would like to avail of the PRC self-directed learning for CPD units. Type in your full name with picture in the comment, take picture together with the ongoing Enrea Business Forum, and send it to Enrea for certificate of attendance with a fee. The contact details and the email address are already shown in the screen in front of you. Uh, to all our uh, Zoom participants, uh, kindly mute your microphone. Uh, only the MCs, moderators, officers, and speakers are allowed to use the microphone and camera. If you have questions, type your questions in the chat box, or if you are watching us on Facebook Live, you can type in your questions there. The moderators will assess and handle the questions after all the speakers have spoken. To introduce our first speaker today, she is a real estate broker, a real estate appraiser, currently the director of the Organization of Socialized and Economic Housing Developers of the Philippines Incorporated, or OSHDAP. And of course, the current National Treasurer of the National Real Estate Association. Welcome and good morning, Miss Nicole Lynn Choa. Thanks, Sir Jovi. So our special guest and speaker for today graduated at the top of his batch as summa cum laude in Masters of Law in no other than University of Santo Tomas. In 1995 to 2001, he served as Senior Provincial Board Member of Batangas, then continued his public service as the Mayor of Lipa, where he was recognized by not only the DILG, but also the DSWD and the Office of the President as an outstanding mayor. Some of the programs he implemented during his term included the scholarship of 80,000 college graduates, and the provision of their allowances as well as elementary and high school students. There were developments of free hospitals, microfinance, 
training center, village for senior citizens, and a drug rehab center, and home for not only street children, battered wives, the homeless, but also informal settlers. Without further delay, let me introduce one of the most outstanding mayors for social services, out under Secretary Maynardo A. Sabili. Uh, well, magandang magandang umaga po sa, inla, sa inyong lahat. Good morning, everybody, and to the officers and members all over the Philippines ng Andrea. You know? It's an honor to uh, to be invited at this uh, forum. At uh, natutuwa ako, nakita ko si uh, ang aking mentor, ang aking kaibigan, si Mr. Marcelino Mendoza. Nandito pala. Okay. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa Enria at uh, nakita ko yung uh, how comprehensive and how diversified ang uh, inyong organization you know yung uh, inyong uh, role and I'm 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 very very happy to be here today so uh, maraming salamat po for very uh, 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 napaka by kind introduction sa akin at uh, I'm very happy to be here today. Binabati ko po lahat ang president. Hindi ko lang nakuha yung uh, uh, siguro basis busy schedule natin. No? Ngayon today, na panay, although tayo ay laging Zoom, virtual, ano, ay busy-busy. Hindi ko na rin nakuha yung, uh, yung mga babatiin. Pero anyway, uh, gano'n na rin po. Uh, binabati ko ang lahat ng members, lahat ng guests at uh, ang lahat po na nandito ngayon umaaten sa sa pagditipong ito itong napakagandang event ng uh, yung ating pag-uusapan ngayong araw na ito. Uh, as uh, introduced and clarified by and defined by our uh, president ano Ms. Magdoto earlier yung role ng uh, role po ng Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development. Actually, uh, we just uh, celebrated our second year anniversary last February 14. Ano, at uh, siyempre, as a new uh, department, uh, ngayon pa lang po kami nagpupuno ng mga lahat ng kailangan, yung mga empleyado. Uh, uh, alam nyo, we uh, nag, uh, nag operate tayo in 16 regions of the Philippines. So, uh, we started last year na magandang siguro nasa 40% na po tayo. Kaya siguro kung makikita ninyo how effective, how, uh, how we are going to perform the function of the department ano, hanggang region, ay uh, hindi pa natin pwedeng asahan yung 100% ano, compliance. Pero we are doing our best at sana ho uh, hanggang December ay uh, more or less uh, ma, ma, ma ano na natin mais na natin yung yung ating uh, deployment ng mga empleyado so that we can serve uh, all the needs of our regions you know Kung nakita ko na pagarami pa lang uh, branches ano uh, ta or, our organization nito hanggang as far as uh, Mindanao Bisaya Luzon na nandiyan kayo lahat ano and it's good that you have an organization like this Actually, this, uh, no, we are talking, or the topic for today, of course, is the uh, anti-illegal uh, practices of uh, real estate brokers and developers. And uh, it's true that uh, last July, uh, the, uh, the, our uh, secretary, Secretary Eduardo del Rosario, issued uh, an executive order creating the anti-illegal uh, task force or the, this uh, we call the uh, against uh, uh, scammers. The purpose of this is to create, uh, no, uh, we actually were the technical working group, I'm the chairman, and uh, we drafted a memorandum, uh, uh, joint memorandum circulars, and it's uh, actually, it's an agreement. It's a, jo a joint agreement or cooperation between the, the Department of Justice, the Department of Local Government, the Professional Regulation Commission, the Department of Environment, the Land Registration Authority, the National Bureau of Investigation, and as well as the National 
uh, Bureau of Pims and then a uh, Philippine National Police. Of course, on the sideline, because we realize uh, and uh, due to our negotiation with the uh, Real Estate Brokers Association of the Philippines and some other organization like Enria, we are uh, contemplating and we have already resolved this matter that we will include the association as part as part of our uh, uh, group, uh, a technical working group, and of course as a member, as an important member of uh, this uh, organization or this uh, anti-illegal uh, practices. Actually, uh, the, the status of this uh, memorandum circular is now uh, we finalized the draft and uh, we already circulated the uh, copies. So all the department concerned, and I hope uh, before the end of the month, it will be uh, signed by all the secretaries and uh, involved. And then uh, we're going to start. No, they start with, of course, we have already uh, have the implementing rules and guidelines. And uh, our proposal is that uh, we will uh, include the real estate uh, brokers association or uh, the group like uh, Enria to be a part of this organization because we realize how important your role will be because uh, uh, as we all know, because it's uh, the uh, composition of this uh, organization or this uh, anti-illegal uh, scammers you know, or practices is that uh, we have the national level uh, when you speak of the national level, we're talking of the Department of uh, Human Settlement as the lead agency. And of course, we have this DILG and uh, the uh, PRC, EMRIA, uh, LRA, and uh, many other agencies. Uh, the purpose of the, uh, the, this, uh, uh, of the, uh, no, the, uh, the role of its, uh, uh, of its uh, department, like the national and the regional, we have the national, regional, the provincial, and the local uh, level. No, we have already defined that in our memorandum circular. Of course, the national, uh, on the national level, of course, we lay down the uh, policies, programs, and everything, and then it is cascaded down to the regions. The regions has uh, its own role. No. Usually, the regions had said that by the regional directors and the uh, co-chair is the, uh, of course, the DILG regional uh, offices and members are the you know, DNR, PRC, uh, uh, no. it's as, as its own role. But the most important is this, the re reason for the creation of this uh, anti-legal uh, practices. It's that uh, because we know for a fact that uh, uh, there is a lot of complaints, you know, we can see those in the media and uh, every day, every, every day uh, in most of the regions, uh, like for example, the region 4A, you no, know, in coordinate, uh, I, I, I coordinated and have a constant conversation with Director Otero of the region 4A, the RIS, the district regional director, and uh, he laid down to me all the problems, uh, that are being confronted by the uh, by the uh, district, and of course, uh, most of the uh, victims, uh, no, we call it the vulnerable uh, members of our society. Some of them are the uh, OFWs, you no, know, almost uh, their uh, hard-earned income and really, uh, really uh, after they will be uh, you know save this amount, and then they will be victimized by the illegal practices. So uh, we focus on that uh, aspect. Uh, some of the uh, uh, practices that they are doing is that uh, their advertisement in the newspaper. So of course, uh, once it is the most of the uh, is more open than not, the people really believe in newspaper ads, and uh, of course they have uh, you know insidious machinations or their sorts of uh, invitation. Then uh, uh, this uh, this thing, I know uh, all of these things. A real gabriel towards the uh these are crafted so that our people our uh, you know uh, the would be victims you know uh, will be uh, enticed to to buy no so uh, we can we cannot call it as a sales technique because uh, 
uh, we should comply, of course, and every advertisement, let's say, you should, you should be truthful in all your advertisement. That's why, uh, you know, as the real estate practice, practice uh, use practitioner, you know the rules and regulation. No? You know very well that, uh, of course, uh, the PRC are the one in charge of the registration of uh, or licensing of these uh, professional real estate brokers, uh, their agents and uh, practitioners. And that's why they are uh, members, you know, we know the rules. That's why we have this. And uh, the purpose of this real estate, uh, you know, this uh, task force or agency task force in order to curb and, uh, you know, to, uh, to solve every, uh, every problem. So the most important here is that, uh, you know, you have a role, your organization as a real estate broker association, the Philippines, uh, you are on the front line. You're already dealing with people and you know this, what is happening all, all around. So you can help us very much, no? You know, uh, the role of the national police. Of course, we uh, realize that, and, and of course the mayors, the, uh, the head of the local government units. We give, uh, you know, we, we are already, uh, uh, we are included in this task force as the lead the local agency so that they can also help us in the, uh, you know, in order to arrest, in order to, to investigate, you know? The most important is that uh, we, we should uh, have an organization and uh, the success of our organization is that, of course, the members should have uh, a joint uh, uh, cooperation, you know, that they should, as a legit agency, cannot do it alone. We need the cooperation of each and every one. That's why we have already this organization. As a matter of fact, it's in reality, in the real practice, you know. And they, I was a former chief executive for nine years in the city of Lipa. And uh, the mayor has the responsibility in the city or his uh, juris territorial jurisdiction to, you know, to, you know, to, to city the, the is an order, and the uh, welfare of the people, it's uh, it always guarded upon against these uh, illegal practices, you know. As a matter, even if there's no such thing as the technical or this uh, group, you know, anti-illegal scammers, you know, anti-illegal practices, you know, everybody can uh, prosecute, everybody can file a case, you know. Uh, like with us, the normal procedure of filing a case in the in the court, let's say in the fiscal's office, no? If it's in the barangay, they can file it immediately in the barangay and they can file it in the police. The police can do the arrest. There is a, even though there is a, no warrant, huh? there are, there are cases where in, we can affect the arrest. That's, but uh, we realize the importance of uh, an of organized group. We call it an organized group. And uh, the, the, mo the importance of this uh, organization or relevance is that we can focus and we have already an arrangement. It's an organized, it's a comprehensive, there will be a comprehensive, a holistic approach to this one. Now, that's why I'm telling you now that uh, your, your group has an important role. And we can uh, we can carve and we can uh, and it cannot just uh, eliminate hundred percent, but the most important is uh, we can uh, tell to the, to the to the people to the to the whole world or to the Philippines stakeholders that uh, we are here, and of course if you'll be violating the law, we can we are always here in order to prosecute you. No, it's a warning. To these people that uh, you must not commit any illegal acts against our against the our uh, big, uh, would be victims you know, or to the people uh, we lay, we we know all the rules and they know that we exist and it's uh, of course it's a uh, we can we can just just a warning to these people that that this should with all the stakeholders with the cooperation of real estate uh, Association, you know, I can believe that we'll be successful you know, in the piling of case, gathering of information, 
because uh, once it is there, we already started the this group, and of course, it will start in due time. We will have a hotline. We have our, you know, uh, the uh, headquarters for every localities, for every regions, and the national level. We have hotline, and we have people who will be consulted or in case there will be a problem, in case they encounter. And we have already a procedure how to file cases. Because some in the, some of the regions right now, like for instance, in Mindanao, our director uh, in Lamet, that uh, the one of the problem is that uh, they don't have lawyers or legal assistant to assist in the filing of the case, in the uh, drafting of affidavit. But uh, this uh, matter, can be resolved because this is only a small matters that can be uh, addressed by our group. Now, let's say the filing of the case, we can uh, always uh, assist each and everyone. Oh, if there will be a victim, let's say uh, there's a present, uh, uh, let's say what. At this, uh, uh, at this point, uh, na interrupt ginagamit ko yung iPhone ko. Ah, uh, for instance, in a certain area like uh, let's say Tagaytay, no? There is uh going on a certain scam where in uh, the people uh, are aware or some group aware that they're doing these things uh, they're selling uh, properties or selling without any permit, they are not licensed, they're not registered. Uh as a whole, they're really a scam because they're uh, committing illegal acts. No? So the most important is you can feed the information to our uh, local uh, level. Of course, it, uh, they're defined. And you, as the, you, know, you can uh, provide information. You can help us gather. We call it uh, in the NBI by the police or the investigator. We call it uh, case build up. You know? Once you have this initial evidence, you know, we can file it automatically like directly to the to the uh, fiscal's office because the procedure is that filing. That's why the the role of the uh, Department of Justice, uh, they're in charge of the pros prosecutor prosecutor arm of the government. They're the fiscal's, you know. They're the one who file the you know. They're uh, the uh, of course our lawyers will be the one to file that case with the complainant in the fiscal's office, after which the fiscal's office will conduct the investigation. We call it the uh, preliminary investigation. And once there is a finding of probable cause, you know, uh, it, the, the case will be filed in court. And of course, uh, but before the filing, of course, a warrant of arrest will be issued by the judge. And then in the person will be arrested and tried. No? So the case will start and of course we need lawyers and uh, the most important is uh, is that uh, in this uh, procedure, we have this uh, uh, organization, you know, task force. The uh, prosecution or the DOJ is our regular o chair, and they uh, will play a very important role because in the prosecution of crime, in during the investigation, of course, the police and everybody has the role because we have to present evidence the uh, prosecution and we call it uh, preliminary uh, investigation and once that it's already concluded and the case is filed in court still we need the prosecutors or the fiscal because uh, of course every case or criminal case uh, we can call it a criminal case because uh, the title of the case is people of the Philippines and every criminal cases because it's people we need the fiscal the prosecutor so our complainant doesn't have to get, don't have to get the, the services of proper of a counsel or legal counsel, who can just be, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can you you don't have to get them because uh, you have already the prosecutor, or the fiscal, and that will serve as lawyer. That's why this uh, ca the case is uh, you continue. I cannot say that I'm no longer interested because uh, once the case is filed, we have to. Uh, pay for the professional fees, for the appearance fees, and everything for every pleadings, 
that uh, you know that the services of a lawyer is needed, but the fiscal is there. So that's why the role of the fiscal is important here. And the police officers, the NBI, you know, even though you can, uh, there's a, uh, uh, there, there, there is a certain situation wherein you can effect an arrest, even without a warrant. What I have already discussed before is that uh, the procedure, once you, you want to file it, there, uh, there is a sort of preliminary investigation that uh, the case should be filed in cause and there should be a probable cause, you know? No, so that uh, it will prosper or filing the case will be prosper in court. But uh, in this uh, instance, I can discuss that we can do it. Let's say uh, those are, or cases we can affect, or a person or the group can affect an arrest even without a warrant. And that is possible because uh, there are so many uh, exceptions to the rule that, uh, that you can uh, affect an arrest, let's say. Well, the crime is being committed. Nakita mo nagko-commit na yung crime na dito nagpupulong at nilolo ko na. Ano? Nakita may kausap and then hinuli. Pwede natin yang ano, pwede natin yang intrap habang tumatanggap ng pera. Well, the documents is being submitted because we know the fact that uh, ito naman ay eh, wala hindi authorized, walang license and ito ay nilolo. Diba? We can do a fake arrest. We need the police officers in order to uh, prevent any violence or uh, untoward incident to happen. That is legal and that's valid. Diba? That's why we need the NBI, we need the police. No? And of course, we can impact an arrest. That's why our group uh, plays a vital, uh, the group, this organization, will do so much in order to curb these illegal practices. No? But I believe. I can tell you right now, straight from the eye, that your role is, you have an important role, I we need you, so that we can uh, successfully uh, accomplish our mission, no? in this uh, uh, memorandum, uh, in this uh, uh, project. So we need you, no? At uh, alam ko, the most important here, of course, uh, we'll have seminars or we have some sort of uh, orientation because you'll be a member, you will be apprised of your uh, duties and obligation or role. So uh, my uh, advice to you is to keep in touch with our department. You can uh, set uh, a meeting with our secretary. And of course, uh, if you cannot uh, contact our secretary, you just approach uh, uh, Oya Mars Mendoza is uh, Mars. Uh, Mars is very close to our secretary. No, he is an advisor of the secretary also, and of course he is my advisor. Uh -huh. We can help each other, and of course your group. You're most welcome to my office. I'm under the. I am the in charge of the regional operation of the uh, Dison, and you can uh, always. Uh, you know, uh, have a good communication or contact me anytime. Maraming, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at mabuhay po kayo at uh, sana ay lalong uh, maging uh, maunlad ang inyong organization ang lahat ng members, officers ay malusog at malayo sa karagdaman at sa sakuna at maiwasan natin at let's pray to our Lord na sana matapos na po itong pandemic na ito matapos na po ang COVID na ito, kayo lang po, Panginoon, ang makakatulong sa amin, sa ating lahat ng mga, sa atin, sa, sa, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, sa buong mundo, na sana ay mawala na po at uh, maligtas na ang lahat ng mamamayan. Maraming salamat po at uh, magandang araw sa inyo lahat.